Hey guys, I just want to apologize for not uploading. I think the last time I uploaded was like a week, week and a half ago. So I apologize. Just be busy with uni. So I'm gonna try my best to try to upload more. Right now, I'm going to Penta and I want you guys to, you know, see what Penta looks like for anyone who's going to uni next year or in the future. And let's go because I'm running late. I literally to go five minutes to get there. So. So today we have a, um, a guest, not a really a guest. Yeah, I can't even call him a guest. I can't even call him an elder. It's hard for me, but as you say, we have to be honest with honor who honor belongs to. So today we have in our mix Elder Bright. Everybody knows Elder Bright. Most of the people here know Elder Bright. Elder Bright is um, one of the youngest pioneers of Pensa UK. He started from Pensa DMU. So when it comes to Pensa, he knows what he's doing. He's one of the young preachers around the UK, so today he's with us to bless us in all ways. So I will just leave the platform for you now. So, Amen. 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 I'm, not, I'm not really feeling the vibe at all. <laughs> Northampton Uni. Okay, shall we just be on our feet for a second? I'm not, I'm not feeling the vibe at all. Amen. So it's another beautiful day. Today, actually, the sun was out, which is very strange for the month of October. But you know, whatever and everything that God does, we take it and we we'll enjoy it. Those of you that are just coming in, we've got seats at the front. Amen. So, today I've been given a topic of walking in integrity. Wow. Integrity. How many first year students do we have here? Oh, put your hand up, you're okay. You'll get to third year, don't worry. Okay, how many second year students? How many third years? Okay, how many are finished? Okay, how many are working? Okay, we've got some workers as well. Okay, so we'll try and cover base for each one so that we all benefit from it. So we are talking about working in integrity. Walking in integrity. What is integrity? Anyone? <coughs> oh, it's going to be an interactive session, so don't think that I'm going to be the one doing all the talking. Integrity is when you say you're going to do something and you get it done. Okay, when you say you're going to do something and you get it done. Okay, anything else? Integrity. Code of conduct or system of rules or regulations. Okay, anyone else? I like the words. Some punchlines are coming out and I'm going to touch on it later on. Anyone else? Some people have put out your phone checking Google. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. I know it's not part of your course, so you don't have to know. It's fine. So, yes, my sister, you were the first one to pull your phone. Right? Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. Mm -hmm. um, it says um, being honest. So, being honest with yourself. And then what else does it say? What else does it say? Um, the state of being whole. The state of being whole. Yeah. Wow. What else? She, she's the one with Google. That's what Google gave you. Wow. I think our brothers came up with something better than what Google is giving us right now. But okay, a system of being. Someone that actually practices living honestly. Okay, someone that practices living honestly. Okay. Can I take one more? The back there. All the way to. Nobody has spoken all the way from this side. Huh? You, are, you spoke. No one at the front has spoken. I would, I would say simplicity. 
Simplicity. Wow. Simplicity. Okay. Okay. She saved the two ladies next to her. So that's why they will come to this side. Somebody decide to speak. Or else at least I know one person's name. So get ready. And then these three ladies, don't, be, don't think because you are recording me, I won't, I won't call you. <laughs> one of you decide, what is integrity? I want to make this as interactive as possible so that we actually learn something from it. I'm not about to pour things out. All right? We're all going to learn, we're all going to contribute. So when you say that this is what it means, I expect you to later on in life say that this is what I said, this is what I believe it means, this is what I'm going to live by. All right? So that by the end of the session, we will all learn a thing or two. So two more definitions for integrity and then we'll move on. So oh, yeah, sisters, anytime today, <laughs> we have to go back to the um, I would say, um, from what I'm understanding, it's also what, um, walking with a standard. Walking with a standard. Walking with a standard, okay. Having moral principles. Having moral principles. Having moral principles, all right. Take some of these words that are coming out, all right. We're going to piece it all together. Having moral principles. Anyone else? Okay. Someone that keeps to your word. Okay, brilliant. In John chapter 4. In John chapter 4. When Jacob had run for so long because of the presence of God upon his life and the grace of God upon his life, he became very tired that he wanted to rest in his journey. In that resting place, Bible says that he placed his head on a stone. How many of you have rested on a stone before? Our brother has rested. Is it very comfortable? Not, not comfortable at all. How many of you, of you have been steady and tried to sleep on your desk for a while? Is it comfortable? No. You wake up with some neck pains and you're stressed out and you're angry. Because that's not where God designed for you to rest. But even resting his head on a stone... He received a vision. How comfortably can you sleep on a stone to receive a vision? Even those of you that sleep in bed, you don't even get visions. How much more somebody sleeping on a stone? Has become your forte. You know, you get money, you don't know what tells you what to do with that money. First year, you get the first student loan. And then within like a week, Zara, you know, doing the MJs. Few jackets here and there. You know, now you're eating from restaurants <laughs> instead of cooking the rice your mom gave you. Then after two weeks, the money finishes. Then you remember that your mom gave you a box of Indomie. <laughs> so that's what you've returned to now. We're talking about integrity, but I want to draw your attention to something. Amen. Amen. Our world, there is a huge gap between so-called Christians and people that are genuine Christians. There's a huge gap. That may not make sense. If you take so two Christians or two people that call themselves Christians and you look at their lives, there'll be a huge gap. And you're thinking, ah, are we all serving the same God? Take two people even from Pensa. They've been in Pensa for one year, year one, year two, year three. And you realize that there seems to be a gap. It's not about spirituality. But even in conduct, there is a gap. So in John chapter 4, Jesus meets this woman, starts a conversation. They're just chatting away. Hi. Broken keys. And then Jesus, you know, in his interaction with the woman, says that, go and call me your husband. The woman said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, that's true. My question then is, if it's true, why did you ask to go and call her husband? Integrity. The woman could have said that, yeah, I'll go and call the person that I see as my husband. Integrity. We're looking at what? Integrity. Somebody who lives by a certain code. Someone who lives by their word. Someone who lives by the morals that they have set themselves or has been set by somebody for them. If I tell you that I'll give you a pound, and I give you a pound, I am living by a certain level of integrity in that particular point in time. So the conversation ends up going around and around and around. 
But the woman kept to her word to the very end. Integrity is what separates the so-called Christians from the real Christians. It's not about speaking in tongues. Integrity is a fruit of the Spirit. How many of us here, every now and again, when we go to church and we are praying for gifts of the Holy Spirit, we all want to prophesy? You know, we all want to lay hands and people receive healing. I don't know the biggest hospital in Northampton, but you just walk in. We have a um, Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. You just pop in there and just start laying hands and everybody will just grab their mats and just begin to leave. Well, they can't grab their mats. It belongs to the government. But, you know, they will grab the stuff that they came there with and they will leave. But how many of us yearn for the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Which is the character of God. Integrity. Everybody wants power. And that is why this world is in chaos. Because we yearn for power instead of the character of God. We yearn for the power of God. Are you getting the connection? Everybody wants power. So when you come into politics, people are willing to push other people under the bus just so they can be in power. People are willing to use other people's bank details to commit fraud just so that they can have something. So everybody wants to be in a position of power. Nobody wants to demonstrate the character of God. But the power without the character will consume you. Amen. Amen. Integrity. As young people, the main scripture that we're going to use today is, I believe, from Genesis chapter 39. Let's all go there. We're all going to read. And then we'll pick up some points and then we'll pray. Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. The Bible says that, I knew Pastor Oliver was coming, I would not come. Bible says that, Joseph was a successful man because God was with him. Yeah? That's what we've just read. Okay. The fact that God is with you doesn't mean that you don't find yourself in sometimes compromising situations. Recently, in, in, in some of myself and some of the youth that I mentor, we've been looking at some of the myths surrounding Christianity. A lot of people think that when you come to God, that's it. When you come to God, listen, if it was biology that you were failing, that's it. You don't even have to study anymore. Because the Bible says that and God gave them understanding into all literature. So you read any literature and God will give you understanding. <laughs> if it was like that, I would have closed the University of Northampton already. And everyone would just read anything and they would acquire the knowledge that they need to acquire. Amen? Yeah, yeah. But God was with Joseph, but he was a slave, number one. God was with Joseph, but he was a servant, number two. God was with Joseph, but he was sold. So at what point was God going to deliver him, is my main question. God is with you and you speak in tongues. God is with you and you are successful. God is with you. However, that cause... You are filled and filled and filled. So the next question you ask yourself is, where is God in this element? Where is God in this picture? Bible says that Joseph was successful in Potiphar's house. God was with him. However, the same God that was with him had allowed it for him to be sold into slavery. As if that wasn't enough, somebody buys him. At least leave me in that slave market so that nobody buys me, so they, maybe they, they may send me away. 
Amen? Amen. Are we picturing what's going on right now? God was with him. But he was sold. Now he's ended up in the house of somebody who doesn't believe in God. Who doesn't live by the morals that he lives by. Who doesn't know the God that he knows. I've told you that integrity is what separates the real Christians from from the so-called believers. Integrity. Should we move on? And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. <laughs> his master. Sometimes people don't understand what you're going through. Do we genuinely think that Dave and Joseph was happy being a slave? Sometimes when people see you and at church, you are excited, you're jumping up and down, you know, praises is going on, and you're trying your very best. Regardless of what's going on, you know, going on during the week, you're trying your very best to portray something to God. However, deep within you, you know that things are not 100. Deep within you. Everyone else around Joseph could tell that God was with him. And Bible says that he was successful in everything that he did. Potiphar testified that everything that he, he touched became prosperous. So when you read further down, Bible tells us that Potiphar then handed everything to Joseph. He handed everything over to Joseph. A foreigner, a slave, a servant. Handed everything over to him. Amen. I, where I work, when I don't work in that main office and I go somewhere else, this is, how, this is the policy. The moment I leave the house, I start counting the hours it will take me to get to work. And dependent on which office you're going to that week or that day, you will then have to write the mileage that you've done. And obviously, using different routes generates different miles. So recently, I was delivering a call somewhere, and I was there for like five weeks. All right? Now, when I put in the post school from my home address to the office that I'm going to, it's like 7.7 .7 miles. So I did the five weeks, and I know that, okay, when I'm claiming for mileage, I'll put 7.7 .7 miles. But then when I put it in um, AA route plan. It says 11.9 miles, one way. And this will generate extra 50 pounds within that five weeks. Mm -hmm. This was when Michael had spoken to me that he would be speaking about integrity. So I came into the office on Monday and I was contemplating. Should I put this 7.7 .7 or should I put 11.9? It's Monday. And then you calculate the thing, the one of them will say 152, one says 172. Which one should I use? 11.9 or 7.7? Integrity. If I put the 11.9, my manager will authorize it because when you put in AA root plan, it says 11.9 miles. But I know that when I was leaving the house and I put it in ways, it gave me a 7.7 .7 mileage. Amen? Amen? When integrity is when you do something that is right at a time that it needs to be done. Not knowing what others will think of it. That's what integrity is. Doing the right thing regardless of what others think. Doing the right thing when nobody is there to monitor you. So you come to church. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? 
So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or be with her. We'll carry it for a second. So everything is going on very well in Joseph's life. Everything is fine. I'm sure he's probably forgotten about the fact that he's a slave. He's forgotten about the fact that he's in uni, he's in first year, he's here for a reason. He's forgotten about the fact that he has someone to, you know, make proud of. You know, he's forgotten about the fact that he struggled to get to uni in the first place. He's forgotten about the fact that mom and dad have been struggling to get you to where you are. He's forgotten about the fact that he's taking student loan and he has to pay you back one day. So let me make use of the fact that I have this opportunity now. He's forgotten about the fact that now he doesn't have to report to anybody else. He's forgotten about the fact that he's left his father and mother and siblings back home. Because everything is successful with him right now. And then he gets another opportunity. By his master's wife. Now let's break it down, this down a little bit. If Joseph had agreed to lie with the master's wife, what, what, are, what are some of the benefits that he would have gotten out of it? I said this session was going to be interactive. What are some of the benefits? You're already in charge of everything. And then you get the master's wife as well. My brother is smiling. <laughs> don't know why, but he's smiling. So I'm guessing he has something. You don't? Okay. What will be some of the benefits? Someone tell me. Pleasure. Pleasure. Okay, pleasure. Yes. What else? Power. Power. Okay. What else? Um, sexual satisfaction. Sexual satisfaction. That's a very mouthful. I couldn't even say that. <laughs> sexual satisfaction. What else? <laughs> Come on, guys. What else? Freedom. Freedom. Okay. Not the music. Freedom. <laughs> okay, freedom. What else? There's something I'm looking for. Um, leverage. Leverage? Huh. Okay. It's looking for. Okay, leverage. I like that. Okay, what else? Anyone else? Some people are determined not to speak today. Okay. What else? Coming to the two sisters and the back. So how do you have one of you say something? Um, more authority. More authority. More authority. More authority. Elevation. Promotion. If you had been put in charge of five things out of six, and someone says that, be in charge of me too. That means you have more authority. You have leverage. Anything that Potiphar discusses with the wife, the wife will tell you. Does that make sense? Anything that happens in the bedroom of Potiphar, now you're pretty much in that same room because it will be relayed back to you again. If Potiphar goes away, you are the Potiphar of the house. If Joseph had gone in to do what the wife of Potiphar had requested, this is the, how the scenario would have played out. He would have been promoted, and that's the bottom line. Don't let anyone fool you to think that if he had slept with the woman, he would have suffered. No, he would have been promoted. But his promotion would have remained in that house. Are you getting the picture? Yeah. There is a difference between being promoted by man and being promoted by God. Integrity. So do everything that I'm asking you to do. When you're done, you will not only have satisfaction and pleasure, you will not only have leverage, you will not only have authority, but you will be promoted. You know, when I read that scripture the very first time, I realized that Satan is a very bad individual. And I know that's a statement that we already know. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because in the Garden of Eden, Satan went to the woman and said that the day you eat this thing, you become like God. But man was like God. So the woman was telling Joseph that when you do this with me, you will be promoted. But the bottom line is, he was in charge of everything already in the house. So what, what is Satan giving you? Nothing. Are we getting the image? 
He tells you who you are. But because we are quick to undermine what we have, we are quick to take up on what Satan is telling us. Much more than what God is telling us. Amen. Amen. So the woman is saying that, here is five pounds, it belongs to you. But if you sleep with me, I'll give you five pounds. So give me my five pounds. <laughs> I, am I making sense? The Bible is very, very clear. Joseph was in charge of everything in the house. But if he had slept with the woman, he would have been in charge of everything in the house. The only thing that would have been different is the satisfaction and the pleasure. How much satisfaction would you get knowing that your master could return any day? Am I, am I making sense to people here? Integrity. Joseph says that, how can I do such a thing to my God? <laughs> like, ah, this guy is very naive. Somebody is standing in front of you like this, offering you all this. And you say, how can I do this thing against my God? What would be the best word to use to describe Joseph in this modern day? I know I've said naive, but what is what? Wet or moist or <laughs> which one is he? Oh, give me a terminology for Joseph. Or oh, are you scared because he's in the Bible, you know? You don't want your name to be wiped out from the book. No, don't worry, your name's already in there. How would you describe Joseph as a friend if Joseph was your friend right now? If you were not a Christian. Very stupid. <laughs> what? Oh, very you too. Very stupid. Okay, nice. <laughs> Who else? What, what, how would you describe Joseph? Dumb. 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 Very. Ah, you. You. Yeah, dumb. I don't know how to even describe you. Sorry, so um, what are you saying? Waste man. He's a waste man. <laughs> Such a waste man. Somebody said that he's not even. We won't even call him useless because there's no use for him. He's just less. <laughs> he's what? I'm sure you understand what that means. But Joseph said, how can I do this thing against my God? And then against my master. Number one, God is not there. Number two, your master is not there. So if you do it, do it. But integrity is doing something when nobody else is there. Somebody told me one time that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. It is not about the fact that you are successful. It is what you do through that success. Amen. Amen. I've written a few points down about integrity that I'm just going to share. And we'll get into a time of prayer. Integrity. Integrity is doing when what you said you would do when no one else is around. When you promise to be faithful, integrity says, I will stay with the person no matter what. So when you look in our traditions and in our culture and in our current state of affairs right now, divorce is as a result of integrity. You said to what? Till death. Broken homes is because of integrity. People are saying that politicians don't tell the truth. It is because of what? Integrity. integrity. People are saying that men are trash. You can't trust men. It is because of what? <laughs> they stop saying that because of Christmas is coming. Yes, so they stop saying it. Because of what? Integrity. People are willing to take up on people's identity and commit fraud so that they have money because of what? Integrity. Because if you have integrity, you will not do something that will jeopardize somebody's future just so it will put you in a good position. Amen? Amen. So when we are going about criticizing people in our churches, in our pensions, in our universities, my question is, have you mastered integrity yet? Amen? Amen. Satan can only present what you already have to you. Nothing else. My final point before we pray. Satan never created anything. God created everything that we see. 
So Satan can't give you something that he doesn't have. And he doesn't have anything. Yeah. I just take that for a second. God created everything that we, we see. Satan didn't create anything. The only thing Satan does is this. He takes what God has created, tarnishes it, and then gives it to you. On Saturday, we were at a preparatory meeting and um, Apostle Sam made a statement that really hit me. And he said that regardless of how good you are to Satan, he can never be good to you. <laughs> Satan will cut somebody's charm, give that person witchcraft, use that witchcraft and then embarrass you one day <laughs> that you are a witch. <laughs> but this thing was just between you and I. But he will still expose you. Satan will cause you to do so many other things. And one day he still will expose you. Amen. Amen. When we talk of integrity. When we hold on to the integrity that God has given us. And I mentioned that integrity is a character of God. Don't chase after the power of God. Without chasing after his character first. Because that power will kill you. And that is why when you look at politicians in Africa. Africa is not progressing. Do you want to know why? Because the character, that comes with the power that they have. Nobody has it. We have taken the element of the power and we have, you know, sub, you know, sidelined the aspect of integrity and the aspect of the character of God. Everybody wants power these days. When pe preachers are preaching, they want to be able to lay hands. People want to be able to do so many things. So when we go for meetings or when we are praying and people are not falling, we think that somebody else is doing a better job than you. But do you have the character of God, which is integrity? To Jesus' final, one of his final words, says that if you will, let this car bypass me. But even that one, not my will. Because he had committed himself to something and he must see you through. Can you see death coming? Jesus, 33 years, you knew this thing would come. I guess that you say if it were like. So who should take that death? <laughs> Amen. But he knew that his integrity is at stake. He has committed himself to doing something and he must see you through to the end. How many of us make promises and in the end can't keep it? When you say they say you don't respect. That's something that me and Michael we share every day. When you say it, they say you don't respect. But if you said you would do this thing, whether Archbishop, Pope, General, Superintendent, whatever your title is, we are all going to be judged by the same law, by the same just God. So he said, I'll do this thing. Commit to be do it. So when I call you on it, actually, you said you would do this thing, and you did. It's not that I'm trying to expose you, but we're trying to make each other better. So as we journey from here, in your first year, Opportunities may come to tarnish what God has put in you. Second year will come. Somebody will bring you a very nice, you know, fraudulent profile. Third year will come. Somebody will present themselves to you. Because, you know, you bought that one, you know, Jordans. So they like you. But if that Jordan, you know, gets that, and you can't wash it. And somebody else buys a new one. And they go for that one. Different opportunities will come your way. When you start work, different opportunities will come. Integrity. When Joseph refused to lay with the woman, there were consequences. Which is that the woman lied against him. He ended up in prison. And all those sort of things. But the bottom line is, God was going to promote him. Which one do you want? The promotion of man or the promotion of God? Am I making sense tonight? Yeah. There are shortcuts that we can take in life. But the bottom line is, those shortcuts will only lead to the promotion of man. You speak to some people, and some of the things that people do, it doesn't make any sense at all. Your own so-called friend. Let's say I'm working with Michael, and today he leaves his wallet there because we are in church in church and then he leaves his wallet for five minutes to go to the bathroom and come back and I've taken the details so I need to commit fraud what, what is that and that same person will stand in church and say that oh yeah I don't like this church because the pastor talks too much 
I don't like this church because, you know, I can't sense the Holy Spirit. Bruh, you lost the Holy Spirit time ago. <laughs> so what's this thing that I can't sense the Holy Spirit? Even if you were saying you wouldn't be able to sense it anyway. Am I making sense? There are certain petty, petty things that we undermine. That sister that gave you the opportunity so that you can mentor or teach them or train or develop them. You're taking advantage of that person and then you stand and say that all girls are the same. Yeah, because unfortunately they are trusting somebody who is not correct. <laughs> because of what you're doing, others don't even want to come to friends. If we were to step out right now and we ask people that know you, that you know that this girl is a Christian, do you know that this guy is an elder, do you know that this guy is a pastor, do you know that this guy is a deacon? What would they say? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense now, yeah. Oh, this is, oh wow. <laughs> Integrity. So even in the prison, I don't know how accurate this is in the Bible, but when you watch those Joseph movies, even some of the women in that country were gossiping about the fact that they are sure the woman lied about Joseph. When you keep your integrity, a time comes where you don't say anything. People will say something and then other people will be like, when they call you for that meeting, call me. There was an issue that happened some time ago when what I was, I was telling, when Michael um, got to hear of it, he's like, oh, Charlie, when you're going to that meeting, you call me. This one, you leave the fight for me. Me, I'll go and do it for you. When you live a certain life to a certain point, you don't have to say anything anymore. People would know who you are. I'm not saying fake it. Say they live a very genuine life. Integrity. Integrity. It is what will separate us from the so-called Christians. Amen. Amen. Shall be on our feet. Okay. <clears throat> oh my God. Hi. So I'm just, you know, recording. I'm still recording. Hey. Oh, you do mind? Sorry. Hey guys. So we finished. No. Oh. Oh, wait. Hey guys. So we finished with Pensa and we're going home. And yeah. That's it. Oh. That's it. Did I? Yes. Oh. Oh. Huh? And just. I just came back from Pensa. It's very inspired me and motivated me to be a stronger person and you might be thinking damn this video is long he talks a lot but don't even just focus on the length focus on the message because he says so many valid points and yeah so i see you guys in the next video peace